Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, QX Resources, a relatively small company, 60, 75 million market cap, focused on battery minerals. And because of the sheer size of growth of this sector, uh, we are going to be working with end users to transform this company and actually become a major player in this sector, starting on hard rock lithium and then moving to others. Uh, the next slide shows a disclaimer. This is available on our website and this presentation was released on the ASX on the 4th of October. So I'll ask you to read that at your leisure. Uh, next slide, please. The company has a solid portfolio of projects in hard rock lithium in Western Australia in a prime location. A couple of them close to extremely well-known deposits. We've also got some new exploration areas uh, which are now just developing concepts uh, in, uh, in Western Australia. Separate to that, the company also has a solid gold portfolio in, uh, in Queensland, in central Queensland. And it's an area that um, I worked on years ago, and I think it's been a little underdone. It's got a solid cash platform, nearly $4 million in the bank uh, as of the first week of October. And uh, I think that's important moving forward. I suspect that the junior sector, even though battery minerals will go well, I suspect the junior sector could have a rocky uh, future over the next 18 months. So it's good to have that sort of buffer. We do have uh, drill ready projects. I'm actually trying to organize a couple of rigs in WA and in Queensland and aim to get some news flow. You can expect the first of that coming out in uh, end of October. And for those who've come across me before, uh, I've got to focus on trying to create a real value for shareholders. And I just think the time is right for a relatively small company that's well positioned to do that again. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a quick snapshot on the company, 880 million shares out, uh, market cap, as I mentioned, between 65, 75 million. It was flattering that uh, share prices picked up a little since I joined two weeks ago. We're on a volume basis, it's a very liquid stock. We've actually turned over uh, the entire register in that two weeks, if you look at it on a volume basis. And I think there's um, there's plenty more to go, but this is a good start. Next slide, please. So the focus, as I mentioned, is on battery minerals, starting first on hard rock lithium. Now, some people have said, why are you working on hard rock lithium? Your last uh, gig was in brine lithium. Nothing wrong with that. All I learned is that the demand is here and now. We need to feed that that beast uh, around the world. And a good way to do that, hard rock lithium can come to market quite quickly. Um, if you get your uh, things right, you can actually deliver possibly even in two and a half years from discovery through development into production. Uh, as I mentioned, a prime location. And uh, I will talk a little bit about demand at the end. But can I just reiterate that with even with um, a potential global recession, the size of this demand and what they're paying, that's not going away. We've got years uh, across the battery mineral space. A number of projects going. We've got uh, a number of pegmatites which are outcropping or subcropping. We are going to be drilling that, releasing some surface samples, doing some geophysics. And then through that process, there may well come some other opportunities. I suspect with this market um, uh, volatility, that may actually create some opportunities and we'll be ready there to capitalize it. I've got a very solid cornerstone investor who was the C capital investor in CATL when they were like a 200 million C capital company. They're now worth over a trillion. And he's got a good eye for these sorts of things. Next slide, please. So if we look specifically at the properties, as I mentioned, WA Focus, uh, Turner River is the uh, flagship project at this stage. It's 15 kilometers down the road from Wadjana. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, Wajana, Pilgangura, and uh, Greenbush are the three large projects in, in Western Australia. We've had some quite flashy numbers at surface, but there's some very good settings. Another one I'm quite keen on is Split Rock. The people who've been working in Split Rock have been predominantly looking for gold and copper, but uh, there's been some recent um, pegmatites discovered sitting in a granite, which makes it less um, obvious to see, and uh, we're aiming to, uh, to get those drilled soon. Next slide, please. Just looking specifically at Turner River, there's a, a carbonate rock with a, a halo around it of lipidolite, which we've uh, bulk sampled at surface, and we should get some results on that fairly soon. It's on the same basic strike. These have a roughly north-south strike. 
um, of pegmatite. Naturally, not every pegmatite is carrying, carrying spodumene or lipidolite, but the things that we've seen at surface have been very encouraging. And I'll have an update uh, within the next two weeks on timing of drilling once we can lock that down together with um, uh, assays and, uh, and geophysics. Next slide, please. Separate to that, it's always good to have a solid uh, gold asset in your portfolio. This area here is what we call low sulfidation, low sulfidation epithermals. Um, so they're quite subtle to see. When I used to work for a company called Kingsgate, these were quite common in Thailand. They're not easy to, uh, to identify, but when you find them, they uh, are generally very high recoveries and go on for a very long period of time. Uh, we've seen that with, um, with one of the mines up the road. Uh, so it's a good area to work in. And uh, weather permitting, we will we'll be drilling. Uh, anybody who's lived on the East Coast knows it's been raining cats and dogs for the last 18 months. Uh, so we are hopeful to drill this at some stage soon. I'm just not too sure if that's this year or early next year. Next slide, please. And uh, the good thing is there's two other companies working in this district. They've actually had some quite exciting results recently, and we aim to replicate those and, uh, and advance that. Probably won't be talking too much about this publicly, just until we can get the sort of results we're looking for. Next slide, please. Uh, as I mentioned, I joined uh, a couple of weeks ago. I particularly liked QX because it had a solid portfolio with some optionality, uh, well-funded. It's also got a good board. Uh, each of the board members have quite different skills, uh, are in the market, have worked geologically, are working with others. That's the sort of thing you want to actually deliver these things, particularly in an early stage, a lot of different skills so we can, um, so we can get this done in a short period of time. Next slide, please. And the key thing that I want to bring uh, to this is concertina the timeline into production and become a new energy player. We'll have some results out soon, uh, moving into drilling. Yes, that's important. Once we find something, I aim to accelerate that quite quickly. And the way to do that is talking to the end users, battery makers, car makers, cathode makers, financiers. The size of the demand here is large. It's not going to be met um, by all of the current projects and players. And so I'm trying to find a way where we can accelerate that timeline without diluting our shareholders. And by getting that participation, they have cash, uh, getting that participation early. It's not common for them to come into the early development phase, but um, they're realizing they're missing out. That's the real focus. Next slide, please. So we are updating our website, uh, QX Resources, just so that it's uh, in line with this presentation and some of our strategies. If you need to uh, um, email me, please do so. Now, beyond this presentation, I've also got two other slides here. And um, I was asked to talk a little bit about the demand, if you think it's appropriate, Tim. Yeah, that's uh, in regards to demand for lithium. I, I, yes. I think we probably um, get into it now, Steve. Okay. So if we move on to the next slide, these are provided by Benchmark Minerals in blue, uh, by uh, Morningstar Trading Economics. The thing that is clear, I've been talking about and others in the industry, is that the growth is massive. And it's not just in electric vehicles, it's in uh, energy storage solutions. And even if we had a recession, you're still going to see this growth because it's mandated and legislated. Uh, Benchmark said just uh, two weeks ago in WA that they expect that we need another 18 Pilkunguras over the next 15 to 18 years. Talking to uh, the top 10 battery players in China, we could actually need six to 10 of those in the next three to four years. That's their growth target. So it's a here and now issue. You've seen uh, lithium pricing go from around uh, $9,000, dollars $13,000 a tonne 18 months ago. It's now tracking around $70,000 a tonne. If you were digging up spodumene, that's around $7,000, $7,500 a tonne, and you're digging that up for $450, $550 a tonne. So that's a heck of a margin. The reason I put this in, though, if you look down the bottom right-hand corner, is that most forecasts, regardless of who they are, have that pricing and that demand tailing off, sometimes in two years, sometimes in five years. And based on all of my work, I don't think that's correct. I understand why analysts have to have that but I think there's a lot of opportunity here. 
And, um, and I think we're going to see that as a here and now thing over the, uh, over the next few years. Next slide, please. To, to summarize that uh, from, um, from Benchmark's perspective on the next slide, they show the growth that Benchmark sees in lithium from 600,000 tonnes last year to 4 million tonnes uh, in 15 years. There's some other participants that are saying that that growth is going to be at least 2 million tonnes over the next five years. So it's, it's enormous. It's not just here. It's in nickel. It's in rare earths. I continue to look at lithium, nickel, rare earths in particular. Um, but suffice to say, regardless of what might be coming down the pipe in the markets, it's looking pretty strong. Um, if we can just go back three slides and I'll take questions. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Um, always lots of questions. Um, given your success uh, in the space and, and, of course, your knowledge in the space, has, it, has the phone been ringing off the hook since you started with QX? Uh, it's actually been flattering, I have to say. Thank you very much for the people who remember me from uh, previously. And um, it, it's been good to see the interest. And I, I think we're going to see a lot of activity across this whole battery mineral space. So thank you for anybody who's been following. And, and is that some of the end users, like the you know the, the some of the partnerships you've been dealing with in the past, they've, they've been on the phone? It's been remarkably encouraging at the sort of... Um, unsolicited engagement that's coming from the uh, from the other end of the market. It's, I was talking about getting them involved earlier in exploration and development. It's not their thing. It's not thinking something they're familiar with, but um, the, the standard practice up until a couple of years ago, 18 months ago, was to go out to large companies, ask for offtake. Well, you would have heard from other lithium producers that's gone it's been sold forward five seven years and so anybody else really has to go and look uh, at the pointy end and uh, that's what i'm hoping to achieve provide that confidence that they can um, they can get success here they don't have to invest in every single one of them but that's the sort of thing we're seeing changing that's in europe that's in the us that's in japan korea and that's in china and, and you've got a you know a, a cornerstone investor there that you, you you touched on. Can what sort of roles and you know how can they open doors? Um, what role do they play? Uh, well, I, I don't really want to speak on their behalf, but just indicatively, what's good about those things is that they already know all the key players. It, it's easy to turn up in Europe or the US or China, um, talk about what you have. But really to get a following, you've got to show what's happened in the past and how you can add value. And the most important thing there is that you go to the end user and say, exactly how do you want it? How do you want your lithium product? How do you want your uh, nickel product? What sort of versions do you want for your different rare earths? Who would I talk to in that supply chain to ensure that happens? And so then you can actually end to end the whole thing. And that's how you um, deliver success. So uh, like our current larger shareholders and others I'm talking to, that's how they can assist. It's more of a, um, a friendly voice, uh, both opening doors and supporting the sort of things that we're talking about. And, and of course, you've got gold that you touched on within your portfolio. Is there any plans to expand the portfolio into nickel and critical minerals? So I know no, we're talking about a big picture and um, you've just got your feet under the desk, but um, are there plans potentially to do something like that? Naturally, no company can be all things to all people. And so some of those may be through some strategic alliances and partnerships. Um, but long story short, when you go to talk to end users, it'd be great to talk to them about all of various products rather than just one. You get a much better audience. Uh, secondly, as I mentioned before, I think the market shakeout is probably going to come down to the pipe, even though battery minerals will con continue to be strong. I think that will actually present opportunities. And then last of all, a gold is a bizarre thing when just about everything else in your portfolio is going badly. And I mean, from investment sense, quite often gold is going well. And so we're looking to be strategic there, perhaps not spend a lot of money on it, but just position that nicely so that if um, uh, if interest in gold does turn around, we can also um, uh, play in that space. Last thing I would say, one of the great things about the investors who are currently in QXR is that it was set up as an investment vehicle. So it's not the standard, okay, we've got this project, then we're going to develop it and run it through feasibility study and get into production. 
There's actually real optionality here. The current investors and the board understand that. And so it creates an amount of flexibility that you can deliver uh, various alternatives for, uh, for shareholder value. Uh, look, watch this space. There's uh, there's going to be some things we'll talk about uh, this calendar year and others next year. Uh, I don't know if all of them are going to come up. There's a few tricks up the sleeve, and it's um, it's going to be quite a bit of fun. And and just finally, so what's your kind of focus for the for the next three months or so? The next three months or four or five months, it's very much getting the results out of our current hard rock projects, getting those things drilled. That's not necessarily saying. Uh, here's a major discovery, here's a massive new resource, but getting enough information and vectors so that we can see exactly where we should be targeting. And if, if things go well and we can at least get um, a couple of rigs into Queensland, it would be nice to uh, perhaps consolidate the position there as well. Um, through that, there may or may not be some announcements about some of the uh, customers are going to be working with. That could be a next year thing. Well, they normally take a good... Um, four or five months to warm up. So thanks very much for the opportunity. Um, it's a pleasure to be back here on this great platform. And um, as I mentioned, the website, uh, we're in the process of actually improving that. But if you want to email me, steve at qxresources.com.au. Thank you so much. Cheers.